Now, I'm going to be honest, I do not know most of the people that are involved in this story, but I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can so y'all can understand where we're coming from when we respond to an idea that talks about the Montreal Canadiens' top players being overrated and overpaid. I wanted to turn your attention to Olivier Primo. This is, according to his Instagram page, an entrepreneur, public figure, he's got 600,000 followers on Instagram, and a lot of his reels have hundreds of thousands of views. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know who he is, but he seems to be a pretty important figure. And there was a clip posted on Instagram earlier yesterday that got a lot of people upset. Take a look at this. It's a podcast clip with Olivier Primo and included on the post here. It's also a shared post by Le Playbook, JIC, Bet99 Sportsbook. This was a show. It's a podcast. And the clip in question is in French. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to it yourself. But this got a lot of people upset. Here's why. To help us out, we're going to go over onto an article published by Elias Adiem from HabsFanatics.com describing what it is that this Olivier Primo said, criticizing two Canadians players in an interview. Let's scroll down onto the article. During an episode with Jean-Charles Lajoie and Greg Lanstot, entrepreneur Olivier Primo, who is also a big sports fan, talked specifically about Cole Caulfield. In a segment where the three guys were discussing salaries and new realities in the sports world, Primo specifically spoke about Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki. Here are some of the quotes, but the full segment is at the bottom for a better understanding of the exact context. Primo says this, We've given huge contracts to Suzuki and Caulfield, who have done nothing. They have done nothing. 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 Greg Lanstad then on the show responded that Suzuki deserved his contract last season. To which Primo replied that the Canadians didn't even make the playoffs. They didn't make the playoffs. They did nothing. I understand, but they still didn't do anything to earn $8 million. I'm not saying it's not good in the long run. We've changed our vision. We pay for the future. We don't pay for the past. Said Primo, who also compared these contracts to those given to Carey Price and Brendan Gallagher. This clip on Instagram garnered, what is it at right now, 90,000 total views? And a lot of people in the comments are going out there and hating on it. I'm going to translate a lot of these comments because most of them are in French. Let's go out there and read. Continue your poutine reviews and stop talking about hockey. It's not too late to delete this. Maybe because they've been rebuilding for two to three years? Wake up at some point. Every time he talks about hockey, I feel ashamed. It's not possible to ramble like that. And so I wanted to respond to this idea, just give my two cents on the matter, because sure, when you look at the two star players on the Montreal Canadiens, Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield, there is an argument to be had that says that a guy like Suzuki, who had scored 77 points in 82 games played last season, and a guy like Caulfield, who had scored himself a in comparison, not all too great, 65 points in 82 games played, there is a world where you say that guys who score this amount of points are not worth $7.85 million like Caulfield is, or $7.875 million like Suzuki is. But that lacks so much context. You just think about the results on paper, you just think about the points that are scored versus the dollar amount. Oh, are there guys who can score more points for fewer bucks? Yeah. Like, around the NHL, there are some contracts that are valuable, like Leon Drysaddle, 8 0.5 million for a guy who's able to get 110, 120 plus point seasons. JT Miller is making 8 million bucks, and he got 100 points last year too. There are players around the NHL who can score more for roughly the same dollar amount, but what a lot of these examples are lacking is context. Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield, what are these guys? The two best offensively capable forwards on the team? Um, yeah, they're kind of that. And the fact is they're locked in till 2030-2031. Nick Suzuki in 2031 is going to be, what, 32 years old? Cole Caulfield in 2031, when his contract expires, that guy's going to be, what, 30? These guys have signed their entire primes of their careers with the Montreal Canadiens, and for 7.8 something million dollars a year in a world where the cap is going up, finally it's starting to go up again after COVID shut the entire league down, and with the projected 
offensive progressions that Suzuki and Caulfield are going to go through over the next few years, these contracts are steals. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a world where Nick Suzuki or Cole Caulfield, neither of them, continue to progress further and they stay in this range of maybe 60-70 points a year as they continue to grow in age. If that's the case, then okay, maybe you can say the contracts are not all too great. But based off of how these guys have progressed so far, based off of what they have learned in the NHL and as members of the Montreal Canadiens consistently getting better, sure, there was a setback year for Caulfield this previous season, but that's because his shoulder was not at 100%. I want to be a believer. I want to give the guy the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, with a full off-season's worth of training with a healthy shoulder, Cole Caulfield has 40-goal potential once again heading into an NHL season. You could say he had that last year, but things weren't really all too great. He had more shots per game in this most previous season compared to 2022-2023, but his shooting percentage was cut in half. This guy went through a bad season goal scoring and shooting wise and it's unreasonable to say that he's going to continue shooting at a really low rate like that he's been a sniper his whole career he's going to be able to bounce back especially once his shoulder is good to go and when you think about the results okay the canadians did not make the playoffs why are they paying these guys so much money they were just in the finals three years ago and guess who scored some beautiful goals and some beautiful plays and some beautiful assists Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki. Remember the back-to-back -back Suzuki to Caulfield to Suzuki overtime goal against the Maple Leafs in game number five? Remember that goal that Cole Caulfield scored? Chipping the puck up and over the Vegas defender, coming right down the wing, cutting in on goal, and burying it by Robin Lehner? Yeah, that's those guys right there. They had proven as far back as three years ago that they are legit NHL players. And while their point productions have not necessarily gone straight up the entire way through, there have been some ups and downs, there have been some injury setbacks, the Montreal Canadiens core as a whole being led by these younger guys into a new generation, Slavkovsky, Doc, Newhook, Demidov, Joshua, Caden Gooley, and the like, the guys at the very top of the mountain are Suzuki and Caulfield. These guys deserve the highest AAVs on the team, and even when you think about just the dollar amount, okay, $7.8 million guy for a player like Caulfield, who had only scored 60-something points last year, while it isn't, like, the best value point per dollar that you could get in the NHL, you gotta think that Caulfield's gonna get better, right? And when the cap gets higher, that $7.8 million doesn't look like $7.8 million in 2025, or in 2028, or in 2029. Things are going to change, and those dollar amounts are going to stay the same. So for Caulfield and Suzuki, as long as they continue to progress, there's no way I'm going to agree with the notion that their contracts are overpayments. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this hot, steaming, burning take given to us on Instagram by Olivier Primo. Please, somebody educate me in the comment section who this guy is, because... I mean, he's got a lot of Montreal stuff on his page, but I'm not really following, maybe because it's all in French. Yeah, I kind of don't speak it well, if you could already tell. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Montreal Canadiens and the Take Here by Primo article and the video will both be linked in the description. If it's not 7.8, if you agree with the idea that they are overpaid, what do you think is a more reasonable dollar amount for these guys when you consider all the variables at hand? Not only how good they are right now, but how good they're going to continue to be and how much the cap is going to go up. If Cole Caulfield gets a 40-goal, 80-point season, this take doesn't even exist anymore. If Nick Suzuki gets an 85-90 point season, this take doesn't even exist anymore. Even if the Canadians don't make the playoffs, even if they get another year of drafting fifth overall, then by the time Reinbacher, Demidov, and that new guy are on the team and Caulfield and Suzuki are seasoned vets, it might just be a matter of time before the Canadians make the Stanley Cup Finals again. Who really knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 99. And bye.